Hi, I'm Jonathan M0JSX, and today I want to briefly talk about an antenna and how I kind of came up with it. But I don't know yet how well it works, so we'll find that out together. This all stems from the fact that a couple of days ago, uh, Tim G5TM released a video which was talking about his idea and design for a dual band end fed half wave essentially. But for his one was for the walk bands, for the 17 meter band and the 12 meter band. And he described how he made up a, an inductor coil uh, to, to essentially choke off 12 meters and then an extra bit of wire uh, in order to get the, the 17 meter tune. And it got me thinking, and actually I messaged Tim and I said, Tim, I love the idea, I love the video, but could, you, could it be made rather than it being for 17 and 12, could you make it for 20 and 17? My thinking was, is that A, I don't have an antenna for 17 meters at home. Um, and it is a band that I would like to get back onto. My previous QTH, um, I was able to operate on, on 17 meters. Uh, from this QTH, it just doesn't happen. Uh, so I would like to get on, on 17 meters. Uh, but also I like quite like the idea of having a 20 meter vertical, um, particularly as, as we're now at the top of the sunspot cycle. So could I create an antenna that would have both bands uh, in one? And well, in theory, and according to the antenna analyzer, yes is the answer. So let's just quickly draw this out. So let's start by drawing out the antenna. Actually, let's start with the coil itself because uh, I don't actually have a way of measuring this coil but in theory this is supposed to be 25 micro henrys and the calculator that tim gave in his video i would also link down below but i calculated it by knowing the fact that my wire is uh, i think it's 1.2 uh, millimeters diameter uh, so i worked out how many, I kind of played around with how many turns I would need. Uh, so I ended up with 26 turns around this particular gray former, which is uh, I measured at 23 millimeters. It's probably nominally 22 millimeters, but measured it. So I popped 23 millimeters into the, uh, uh, into the calculator and 26, uh, sorry, 66 turns around this coil uh, ended up being well, calculated to be 25.3 micro henrys. Now I have lost a little bit of the last turn uh, just because of how it's wound, but hey, it's probably close enough for jazz. Uh, at the bottom, I'm not gonna unwind this too much, but at the bottom, it's just a standard 49 to one around an NFT 240-43 core same as we've seen before like and i've used this winder before uh, as well so let's talk about uh, lengths so uh, we have i'm going to block diagram this so we have the 49 to 1 done that a bit small 49 to 1 and then coming up we have uh 8.5 meters then we have the coil and then we have another short length of wire, which in my case is 18 centimeters. Um, if you work in Imperial, Google it. Uh, and then I've got a tiny little file back at the top just so I can um, hang it, because my idea is to hang this. So I've done sort of a pretty standard fold back with a bit of glue line heat shrink just to keep things nice and neat. Now, when I was building the antenna, what Tim said to do, which is what I did, was to cut the bottom length of wire first with the coil attached uh, and then add the top section, which I did. And I got the SWR one to one on the bottom section. Uh, and then I added the top length of wire. I started off with about a meter, far, far too much as it turns out, because in fact I only did 18 centimeters. Uh, but I was running into a problem and I think it's because my coil is not quite the correct inductance. The problem I was having was that every time I removed some of the top section to bring the 20 meter band in, and I started off with the antenna being far too long, it was down at sort of nine megs, so it was way, way, way too long. Uh, but every time I cut some off, it would cause 
the 17 meter band to go high. Uh, so by the time that I'd got the 20 meter band at about 14.1 megahertz, the tune on 17 meters was way up at 21 megahertz. I mean, great if you're trying to go to 15 meters, but not where I was aiming the antenna to be. So I was having to juggle adding wire back in below the coil, which would then force 20 meters to go long, and then nibbling away some of the top section, which would cause 20 meters to come back up, but would also make 17 go long. So then adding more wire back in at the bottom, and it was just that balancing act to get to a point where the antenna as it is at the moment, 20 meters is cock on. 20 meters is, is about one to one at 14.1-ish megs. 17 meters is slightly high. It's resonant at about 18.5 megs, um, but it's got quite a broad bandwidth. So even on the, uh, the 17 meter band between 18.068 and 18.168, it's less than, than 1.5 to one. In fact, for the majority of the band, sort of 18.1 up, it's about 1.3 to one. Uh, so that's what it is on the antenna analyzer, but I haven't yet done any transmitting on it. So that's what we'll do next. I thought before we go any further, I'll show you how I've mounted the antenna uh, in sort of the, uh, out the back here. And um, now this is nowhere near perfect. Uh, I'm probably going to have to think about changing this at some point in the future, but uh, for now it's at least working. So let me show you how it's mounted. So it starts off uh, down here. You can see that I've got the, uh, the winder. I've got a bit of RG213, which uh, goes back towards uh, the shack. This is not brilliant. It should really be waterproofed, but hey, we're going to just leave it. Uh, and then a bit of wire, which um, goes uh, up. You can see uh, that's where I had to make an adjustment and make a join at one point. Um, and then it goes all the way up and is supported over the top of a, uh, a branch, which you will absolutely not be able to see. Uh, but the branch is just just about as tall as it uh, it needs to be. Uh, so with that, let's uh, head back inside and we'll talk about how well the antenna works. So the antenna has been out for about a week and I've been using it for a bit about a week, on and off. Um, and I've also done a couple of 50-minute um, sort of sessions on FT8, just so we can gauge a little bit of propagation. I mean, the thing is with comparing this on sort of PSK Reporter, is that it's very dependent on time of day, the bank conditions, yada, yada, yada. So take all of this with a massive pinch of salt. Um, and I'm just gonna talk about my experience of, of using the antenna. Uh, let's start on the 17 meter band. Now for both the, the bands here, uh, I left the uh, the radio sort of running with, with WSJTX for about 15 minutes um, and made a few QSOs just at about 30 watts uh, on both bands, uh, just so we could sort of see how it was doing. Now, it was a random weekday morning, uh, so I was never gonna expect propagation to be that great. In fact, you can see uh, from the uh, from the screenshot where the gray line was, so it gives you an indication of time of day. However, that's not the important thing. The important thing is here is that the antenna is radiating, and that's the, the thing we need to bear in mind. So let's look at the 17 meter um, reports, so this is for about 15 minutes, um, I think about 10 o'clock in the morning or something like that, uh, on a random weekday. And as you can clearly see, uh, 17 meters, nice uh, hop into uh, Central Europe, uh, and then sort of two hops over to the uh, east coast of the US. And that's kind of what I'd expect, to be honest with you. It's performing very nicely on 17 meters. Uh, so moving over to the 20 meter band, and actually thinking about it, I may have been running this for a little longer than 50 minutes. I think it might have been half an hour or maybe even 45 minutes. We can see one nice hop into uh, Central and Southern Europe and to, uh, to Eastern Europe as well. In fact, there's like there might be two hops over into uh, sort of uh, Moscow. Uh, and then moving west, we can see that we're getting uh, at least two hops into the east coast uh, and a little bit further west as well. I can see we're into sort of Indiana and Michigan as well. So the antenna is definitely working on both bands uh, and being a vertically polarized antenna um, does mean that the D, the sort of angle of main the main lobe angle should be 
a little bit lower than on a straight vertical, uh, than on a straight horizontal. So how would I sum up this antenna? I think this is a really interesting antenna project, uh, not only because of building it was quite fun, but actually it works pretty well too. Now, comparing it against my sort of end-fed half wave, my horizontal end-fed half wave, which is uh, cut for the 40 meter band, and then works on the harmonics, uh, it's interesting because there are some signals which are definitely stronger on the horizontal antenna and uh, some signals that are stronger on, on the vertical antenna. Uh, I have noticed that my noise floor is ever so slightly higher on the vertical antenna, the, the dual band end fed half wave, uh, if only because I think it's picking up a lot more noise from the house um, because it's still in the same plane. Um, but to be honest with you, it does work. If you, need, if you just wanted to knock together a really simple antenna uh, for the 20 meter band and the 17 meter band, then you can't really go wrong with this. And in fact, if you already had an end-fed half wave cut for say the 20 meter band, well, this would shorten the antenna and give you a second band. The downside, of course, is that on a true end-fed half wave for 20 meters, you would get the 10 meter band as the harmonic. Because of the choking, you don't get that harmonic related band. So um, just bear that in mind. You are, with this antenna design, you are sacrificing the 10 meter band to get 17. Um, now, personally, I don't see that as a problem. Uh, the 10 meter band uh, is a band I do enjoy, and but I do have other antennas for 10 meters. Uh, in, in my own uh, setup here at home. So I'm not necessarily too fussed that I'm losing the 10 meter band um, on the end fed half wave, because to me, 17 meters is a band I don't have any other antennas for, so it makes perfect sense for me. I'm really interested to uh, hear what you think about this. Uh, is this something you would consider building? Um, would you like to see more of this style of, of video where I think of an antenna and, and try and uh, see if I can get it to work? Uh, really interesting. I do leave a comment down below. Uh, if you've liked this video, there's a button specifically for that. There's another button that seems to work just fine too. And if you haven't already done so, please do click on that subscribe button and also press that notification bell. Uh, it really does help me out and you will be told whenever I go live or upload a video. There's another video coming up over here that the algorithm thinks that you might like next. Until next time, 73. Bye-bye.